Hi viewers, welcome back. It's been a while as I've been letting life be about other, th other things, but I'm back today with a quick video on the CZ Scorpion EVO 3 that I gradually set up during 2016. I've only used it in the two local matches so far, but won high overall with it both times, and quite simply, the gun hasn't given me any troubles at this point. It's a very fun little pistol caliber carbine that wasn't originally obtained for competition, but certainly runs great for it. I've had a few people ask questions about it, so I figured I'd share some info and early thoughts on it. So let's run through how it is set up. This gun is meant to have a stock. The pistol config sucks to shoot, although you can run it on extended single point slang decently. The stock makes it awesome though, and very intuitive, natural to shoot. This one is set up as an SBR, and I'm running a suppressor underneath the handguard. But that's up to you if you want to deal with the paperwork and cost. At the least, get the 16 inch carbine version if you aren't gonna SBR it, instead of getting the pistol version. Next, since this was basically a range toy to start with, although I've used it in competition, I wanted to suppress. So again, that's up to you for the paperwork and cost. I did the carbine length handguard to get a longer foregrip for my arm reach. Originally, I bought the pistol version because the carbine uh, handguard was not available and they didn't offer it uh, like they do now with the carbine handguard with the uh, pistol version. The downside of the CZ Scorpion handguard is that the nut is that secures it contacts the barrel. That isn't ideal and there's an aftermarket handguard from HP Industries that allows the barrel to free float. I might go that route in the future but I haven't moved on it yet. The other nice thing about the HP handguard is that it allows you to use a tri-lug adapter for your suppressor as well since the stock handguard nut makes it hard to attach and secure the tri-lug mount due to the diameter interference with the handguard nut down in here. However, there's a guy making uh, tri-lug so sockets now that use an extension with a ratchet and you can uh, secure that uh, tri-lug right to the barrel down through the handguard. Right now I've got the suppressor direct threaded uh, because I don't have that socket yet. This Scorpion was originally the 18 millimeter threaded Gen 1 version. Uh, that means the barrel is threaded to 18 millimeters, which is not standard for the US. But now they have a Gen 2 that uses a half by 28 threaded barrel, so you don't have that concern anymore. So it's a little bit easier for these days. Two of the immediate complaints about the gun that everyone encounters is the safety shape on this side if you're a right-hander, and the stock trigger pull. There are easy, very affordable fixes, so here's the route I went. There are many trigger shoe options out there these days, and that just simply attaches to your trigger pack and changes the feel uh, and the position of the trigger for your finger. Uh, I went with this one because I like flat face triggers, and then I added the HB Industries Light Trigger Spring Set. It takes the trigger pull down to around four pounds or so, and the trigger shape allows a different finger position, so it gives you some leverage that makes the pull feel lighter and better control. The lighter spring kit reduces the pull weight significantly from the stock, uh, but however the travel is still pretty long, and the same with the reset, way out there. Now, the trigger action is still not a competition AR-15 aftermarket type of action uh, with that long reset and long travel, but it's still entirely usable and fast as seen in this local steel challenge match in which I took high overall. Stand by. Stand by. CZ Custom Shop is doing trigger kits though that completely replaces uh, the disconnector, the sear, uh, and the trigger itself for a much shorter reset and travel lengths. So if you want to drop the coin, because it's quite expensive, that's an option that gets closer to a race style trigger, and especially if you're going to use it for competition, you'll definitely want to look at that route. As it is for general range use, the HB Lite Spring Kit is easy to install and very affordable. Now, for the safety, the shape and length of it can cause rubbing on your hand, right in here with the stock one, depending on your size and the grip. Thus, I went with a Gearhead Works Reverse Safety, which allows for easy manipulation and avoid your hand completely. On the left side, I've tried the Apex Tactile and HP Industries AR style selectors, but neither worked as well for me as a stock safety, uh, CZ safety lever. So it's very easy to get to with the thumb and then put it back on safe right there, which is nice when you index coming off the trigger, you, you go right up just like that. Going back in safe is difficult uh, with this one, with the stock one, 
you can't really get good leverage on it. So that's where the gearhead right side reverse lever uh, comes into play. If you don't want ambidextrous safety capability, simply cut off the offending material from the stock safety lever, or there's companies that sell uh, replacement deletes that just be, basically make that a nub. The next item that I changed was the magazine release, as the stock one was not that easy for me to manipulate using one hand. The Gearhead Works reversion allows me to access it with my trigger finger by having a larger pronounced surface here, or you can use your other hand to access the paddle here. In addition, you can use the replacement mag to sweep the paddle like an AK, allowing the empty mag to fall free and then insert the replacement. In terms of sling capability, I wanted the ability to use the same sling I used for my other rifles, which have QD mounts on them. So going with Parker Mountain Machine QD sockets here and here was an easy path. Now another quality of life improvement is the enhanced charging handle. The larger size helps access it easy and quickly, but also because the stock one is pretty close to the top rail and results in scraping up your hand when aggressively using it. This one is from Shooter's Element and allows you to position it with a preferred handle shape forward, either flat or curved, uh, as well as on either side of the gun. So it's a swappable part that whatever side you want it on, it works easily. The next thing I did was change out the grip to this molded version from Yeti Works. It comes with a couple different back straps to tailor how you like the grip in your palm. Uh, this is the flat version, then they have a palm swell that comes out like this. And it gives a bit more comfortable angle uh, overall compared to the stock grip being a little bit more vertical. There's also some other aftermarket grips coming out that uh, shallow out this angle even more. Lastly, I'm a red dot guy. And since this is, this is a close range light gun for fun and competition, I wanted a small cost effective product that I knew was trustworthy. I went with this Vortex Venom. Uh, since it is so light, it offers impressive battery life and gives a wide open unobstructed view. Plus, it is easy to use when I take newcomers out to the range. With the low mount that is included, it does co-witness uh, with the stock CZ iron sights with the stock CZ um, SBR stock. Another quality of life improvement for competition is enhanced mag capacity. This particular mag extension is from CZ Custom. Uh, I actually got it used because it's very expensive, so it's not recommended for everybody. I've only put two boxes of ammo through it. It's a plus 20, so with this 30 round mag, that's 50 rounds you can hold in that magazine right there. So I've only put two complete mag uh, loads through it. It worked perfectly both times. I've heard some problems with people uh, having them jam up and not feed at all and they're sending them back to CZ Custom, but I can't speak to what the problem would be and how they're taking care of that since I haven't experienced it yet. So there you have it. Easy changes that aren't too pricey make this gun comfortable, fast, and fun to, sh to run. In fact, I've shot a SIG MPX and an AR9 home build as well, and the Scorpion has a touch more dot bounce to the MPX, which we attributed mainly to the MPX being heavier up front with the piston setup. The AR9 was substantially more recoil and dot bounce than the Scorpion or the MPX. The aftermarket support for the Scorpion continues to grow, so there are plenty of other options out there to see what features you seek. If you have any questions about what I chose or what I've encountered with the gun so far, feel free to ask in the comments below, send me a message. And since you're here, you might as well hit that subscribe button and throw a like on the video. Thanks for watching and hopefully you'll be back for the next video on the channel. Stay safe and have fun out there.